These are the Virians you spoke of? Albert, Theo, seize them. There is much I might ask of them. <laughs> this isn't over. I am Lieutenant Mariel L. Kenny of the Pangalactic Federation. The two of you are under arrest for violation of the Underdeveloped Planet Preservation Pact. I know that voice. A friend of yours? Yeah, real good friend. She's from the Astoria, the one that destroyed my ship. What? You're trying to take out the Virians in order to cover your tracks, are you? That is not true. We only... Behind you, Raymond! Neon, the battle is over. Surrender now! Is that your idea of a joke? Your Majesty. Because this is far from over. You can have Baldar back. One little fortress means nothing. We are not defeated yet. Theo! Look at what your selfish betrayal has cost us. After you and your father were promised glory under the Empire! I would rather prefer death than allowing such a thing come to pass. Then die. to protect me! I am sorry, my boy. I should have known your anguish. Radio, you're sick, Bay. Uh, what? Listen to me. That ship of yours knows what's going on down here. Get that man into a med pod, now! I can't! The underdeveloped planet protect- It's your Federation tech that's about to kill this underdeveloped planet's king! <sighs> We've got an android here recording this entire situation! I dare you to let him die! I'll rip apart the Federation piece by piece till there's not a damn thing left! I get it. This is Mariel. Akizuki, do you read? I am requesting a med pod transfer here. Stat, it is for the elderly man lying near me. Father! Don't worry, Leticia. The king is gonna be okay. Do you truly mean it? You bet. Now let me introduce you to our savior who's gonna see to it. A golden child of the Pan-Galactic Federation, and apparently a regular UP3 rule breaker, Lieutenant Mariel Kenny. I've got a lot of questions, and you've got the answers. All right. Maybe that's our cue to have our own little talk. Okay then. Let me contact my ship and have it prepare for transfer. Hey Bertrand, is there somewhere around here we could borrow for a bit while we talk? But, but that means the people of this planet could overhear us. Give me a break. A Kenny getting all stiff over some treaty? Or did you forget that this is all on account of you using us for target practice? So be it. Mariel to Akizuki. I'm going to speak with Captain Raymond and some of the local populace for a moment. Yes, I understand. However, please hold your position. 
Thank you for waiting, shall we? The truth is, I have no idea why Bennett the Astoria's captain opened fire. It's... it's a mystery to me. Is that your idea of a joke? Lieutenant Kenny, Captain Raymond's point about treaty violations stands. I should inform you. I will be making a record of this planet, and everything stated between us here. If you are unable or unwilling to speak candidly, this discussion will likely become unpleasant. I am well aware of that. Um, am I correct in assuming you're an android? Yes, I am an Arnold Robotics model E014297. Her name's Elena. I have heard that the androids made by Arnold Robotics on Vergold are among the finest in the galaxy. Elena, I swear to you that all I speak here is absolutely true. Including the fact that I came here to help. What is this bull? Ray. Lieutenant Kenny, I logged an unnatural delay between the second and third barrage just before the Edis was downed by the Astoria. Can you please explain what caused this? The truth is... Captain, we can be in contact range of the Virgold registered merchant vessel Edis in three minutes. Good work. Activate cloaking device. 60 seconds after activation, warp out and prepare to attack. Captain, please wait. May I remind you, cloaking is for emergency situations only. It is also prohibited during warp for the safety of other vessels. And I'm saying this is an emergency situation. Or perhaps you elite officers can't follow orders without explaining each little law they're based upon. N no it's just that we have no reason to fire upon a ship from planet Vergold, especially without warning. Even if they were hostile, attacking without warning is a violation of Article 32. Cloak has been activated, Captain. Now exiting warp. Wait! Lieutenant Kenny, I didn't hear you repeat the Captain's orders. Uh, upon exiting warp, prepare... prepare to attack. Now entering conventional space. One million kilometers to the Edis. Currently at one-fourth impulse. Excellent. Decloak at 500,000 kilometers. Arm the phase cannons. Fire the first barrage at 350,000 kilometers. Phase cannons? Do you intend to destroy them? Lieutenant Kenny, I didn't hear you repeat the order. Repeating the orders isn't merely for confirmation. It is also to allow for correction in the event of an order given in error. We have an issue. It appears the good lieutenant doesn't know what activities the Virgolians have been up to. Are you referring to their recent actions as an anti-Federation influence? Even then, attacking them unprovoked and without notice will only work to their benefit. Now within 350,000 kilometers of enemy vessel. Replace Lieutenant Kenny on tactical authority. Now. Fire the first barrage. Firing first barrage. No! Enemy shields efficiency holding at 60%. Arm proton torpedoes and launch in succession once we have a lock on them. Just make sure not to hit their engines. We're after the cargo they have stored there. I want it in one piece. We have a lock. Firing proton torpedoes. Enemy vessel shields holding at 20%. Captain, their warp drive remains intact. They could still attempt escape maneuvers. Hurry with the next phase cannon barrage. I'd rather have them destroyed than let them get away. Captain, what you are doing is criminal. Upon my authority as first officer, I hereby relieve you of command. Very well. I do believe it's written in your beloved Federation laws that the consent of three senior officers is needed to 
relieve a captain of their command. Are there any among you that agree with Lieutenant Kenny? Wait, what? Lieutenant, you are hereby removed from duty for the crimes of disobeying an order and treason. Now off to the brig, Marielle. Wake up, everyone! This is crazy! What's happened to you all? I see. That would certainly explain the delay before their third barrage. Hmm. In which case, Raymond, I do believe we owe Lieutenant Kenny some thanks. Sure. If her story's true. So what cargo was this Bennett guy after, anyway? Duma, most likely. That thing? Hmm. The three Virians appeared most interested in Duma as well. They too are part of your Federation, correct? What are you? But what I still don't get is why you're here now, Mariel. Weren't you sent to the brig? I was released as soon as we returned to base. My guess is the captain thought me a nuisance, but little more than that. So I borrowed a ship from the space station and escaped once I had the chance. What? I was hoping to recover the black box of the Edis. With it, I should be able to acquire proof of Captain Bennett's misconduct. I find it unlikely that a Federation base would overlook the departure of a borrowed vessel not within their flight plans. That's way worse than just disobeying orders. Why would you go so far? When I was little, my grandmother taught me the ins and outs of the Federation's core systems. I can infiltrate them pretty much as I please. I'm certain my use of the ship will go unnoticed for some time. And... My grandfather had this to say to me. Trust in what you think is right. I know you've got what it takes to stick to your principles through thick and thin. Now, go and apologize to the Edis's captain. Emerson T. Kenny. Quite the hero sending his granddaughter here with a stolen ship. That's not all. Some members of the crew who doubted the motives of Bennett and the Astoria also came along with me. The high-speed merchant vessel Akizuki is now currently monitoring my status from planetary orbit. You mean to say that your comrades are observing all this from some unseen location? Oh, um, yes. I know it might be discomforting, but it was a necessary precaution to ensure my safety. On behalf of my kingdom, I offer you my sincerest gratitude. Oh, did I misunderstand in some way? Um, well, no, not exactly. I just wasn't expecting. Is it odd that I wish to express my thanks to those who saved the life of a loved one? Uh... Chloe, do you believe Mariel here is lying? No, Princess Leticia. I believe she is telling the truth. <laughs> Ray, you are within your rights to be angry about your vessel. Be that as it may, I find Lieutenant Kenny to be honest in her attempts to enact justice. <sighs> All of the crew, including myself, Share the blame for not stopping the Astoria's attack upon your ship. You have my word that we will make the proper restitutions, punish those responsible, and bring the truth to light. Captain Raymond. <sighs> Fine. If you do end up in a Federation courtroom for this, I suppose I can appear on your behalf as a witness. Thank you.
Are you really gonna tag along? I can't imagine you've ever been in a real scuffle. Please don't underestimate me. My grandfather taught me how to shoot, and my grandmother instructed me in close quarters combat. A war on an underdeveloped planet doesn't frighten me. And another thing. Address me with a little more respect. Oh, got it, Marielle. But isn't assisting in a war about as big a violation of the UP3 as it gets? I am keeping my involvement to the bare minimum. I came with as little equipment as possible to reduce the impact the Federation's actions have upon this planet's historical trajectory. Not to mention that I came here alone. Uh, just relax, okay? A whole lot happened, but we're gonna be fighting on the same side now. So let's try and keep things friendly, okay? <laughs> I was just asking if she's ready. I don't think a Kenny would get cold feet over a little UP3 infraction. And how can I question your moxie after you went and stole a ship? If you doubt my resolve, then I'll convince you with my actions. <sighs> I am in no position to argue anyway. It's, uh, kinda different seeing Star Twinkle from Planet Side, eh? Uh, oh, yes, I suppose so. Normally, my only interaction with such stars is a sector data on a screen. But when you can look up with the ground beneath your feet, it's beautiful. It's been a while since I did any stargazing as well. In that sense, maybe I should be happy you guys shot me down. Is that sarcasm? Look, sorry about earlier. I was out of line. Thanks to your efforts in stopping Bennett, Chloe, Elena, and I were able to escape safely. We even got to meet some really nice folks. Our trip on this world has actually been pretty damn fun. My grandfather often said things like that. Grandmother disagreed with him, but... I never would have imagined I'd find myself in this situation. Guess it's the Kenny fate. We have a lot of enemies, you know. How I was bullied since I was a child, coming from a military family known to be blind to all but the end results. I suppose notoriety tends to be part of the whole hero package. I don't want to be a hero. All I want is to perform my duty faithfully and see justice enacted. I don't know. Definitely sounds like the makings of a hero. <laughs> I knew you were being sarcastic. Deck one. Bridge. Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, everyone? Well, there were a few crazy enough to join me in stealing a ship from a base. When you put it like that, it feels like a lot. Let me introduce everyone. This is Sayuri, handling the helm, communications, and analysis. Pleased to meet you all. You have a single officer in charge of three stations? And here we have Pike. He's in charge of weapons, and defense systems, and transfers, and deflectors. Pleasure. Wow. Nah, this is a merchant ship, so I don't actually do all of that at once. And finally, there's Kasim, who has engineering all to himself. Kasim? Hi there. One person in engineering? Oh, and I'm the provisional captain. The four of us are the crew of the Federation merchant vessel, GFSS-12193, the Akizuki. So everyone, meet Captain Raymond of the merchant vessel Edis and his officers, Elena and Chloe. Our first order of business will be leaving the Aster system and getting you all to the Aldis. Given the extraordinary circumstances and the fact that an unidentified ship is approaching, I'd like to ask for your help. 
Is it all right if you assume some of Sayuri and Pike's stations? Captain Raymond, what does that console on the captain's chair tell you? You sure you should be showing me this? All I can say is it's not much different from the merchant ships I know. Then why don't you try sitting there? Whoa, whoa, enough with the crazy talk. Look, you're the only one present with actual experience as a captain. I thought you were in the military! And I'm sure your crew might have some objections to taking orders from a non-Federation civilian. Oh no, not at all. On the contrary, it'd be very reassuring. The long and short of it is... The Akizuki is the first ship we've ever operated completely by ourselves. What now? I'm impressed you were able to steal a ship in the first place. I'm ashamed to admit it, but the truth is we're in a little over our heads here. Can we lean upon those amazing skills that allowed your crew to escape the Astoria's attack alive? Oh man, I am never going to hear the end of this if Dad finds out. All right. First Officer Marielle, let's contact the Aldis before we depart. Understood, Captain. Break orbit. Course 120. Mark 180. Roger! Race defensive shields. Reroute full energy to the rear. Got it. Energy signatures indicate they are preparing to attack. They are using optical weaponry. Shields at 65%. Restoring them now. Damn! Over 30% from a single hit? That's definitely a battleship. There's no way we can survive until the Aldis gets here. Can we escape? Impossible. We must abandon ship. <sighs> Damn it! Sayuri, turn to course 210, Mark 90. Set the autopilot to enter a high orbital trajectory. Roger that. All set. Marielle, is he going to do what I think? Just follow Captain Raymond's orders. Okay, now all hands to the transfer chamber. Hey, uh, do you have a moment? What's this about? Uh... Well, I'm not sure now's the best time to bring this up, but, uh... I got something important I want to ask you. Oh? What is it? I'll answer as best as I can. So, yeah. About when the Edis got shot down. Oh, yes. That. What do you think the chances are of getting some kind of, like, reimbursement or compensation for that? Ah. Uh. Yes. Um, I'm sure we could work something out. Though, uh... It's a little difficult to judge at present with me alone. So, you're saying it's hard for you to push the decision through on your own, yeah? Correct. I apologize. I promise I'll do everything I possibly can to help you, though. Is it all right if I get back to you a little later about this? Sure, yeah, yeah, sorry. I wasn't trying to pressure you or anything. It all just comes down to, like, company accounting and spacecraft registration, so whether it's gonna get comped or not changes how we handle things. I'm just a little anxious is all. Again, so sorry. N no, I totally get it. The military has haphazardly destroyed your company's property. I won't disappoint you. I'll do all I can to negotiate federal compensation for you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, how's it going? You got some free time on your hands? I do not. <laughs> You're bored, aren't you? Is it that obvious? Oddly enough, I've got nothing to do. What do you usually do when you have free time like today? Or say, on your day off? Huh my day off. Well... I 
I like to work out a little bit. Really? So do I. Yeah, I get all stiff after hanging out on the ship too long. Regular little workout keeps me limber and keeps my mind sharp. That's so true for outer space. Would you mind letting me try out the Vergold Battle Simulator sometime? Sure, very cool. And uh, how about letting me have a go with the Federations when the time's right? You got it. This is Mariel, Sayuri, Pike, and Cass. Everyone, this is my brother, Antonio Lawrence. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Mariel L. Kenny, first officer of the Pangalactic Federation vessel Astoria. Astoria? Wait, isn't that the ship that shot? Uh, 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 hold it, hold it, Ant. I'll explain all that later. For the time being, I could sure use some grub and a fresh pot of gel. Follow me, everybody. Uh, this is a pretty hard story to swallow all at once. <laughs> I'm honestly amazed all of you are still alive. All thanks to my friends. Coffee, how I've missed you. I still can't believe the Federation would sink this low. And now you're saying there are renegade ships just slinking around. This isn't some kind of smokescreen to attack Vergald, is it? No, of course not. But... Poking Mariel won't give up any useful answers. Oh. We're lucky that Antonio is so oh, flexible. Like I, I wouldn't have again. been surprised if he it's tossed us all out of an food. airlock. Taking the crash course, I see? Uh, there's so much to learn. I'd like to at least get a little more familiar with the Aldus before we meet up with the Vela Gulf so that I may be of some use if the situation turns bad. Don't push yourself too hard. You must be plenty tired as it is. I can't allow myself to be tired. I don't want this to be a repeat of the Edis. I have a duty to protect the Aldus as a soldier of the Federation. I feel you, but getting proper rest also falls under your responsibilities as an Aldus crew member. So take it easy. Captain's orders. Got it? I'll do my best. Hey, Marielle? Sneak up on me like that. Oh, uh, what were you eating there? M military rations. Oh, the Federation's rations sure are crunchy, aren't they? In my bow, right? What makes you think that? Because I've eaten about a million in my lifetime. You ain't gotta hide it from me. I'm sorry. When you're on military duty, you're never allowed to snack. I was just so, so hungry. I'd say you're in hot water for sneaking munchies aboard without telling me. But I can't get mad at you for snacking on the go. We do the same in the transpo business. <sighs> Thank you. Um, would you like one? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Which flavors you got? I've got salami, veggie salad, and takoyaki ones right now. Okay, then in that case... I'm going with takoyaki. Oh, so you know what takoyaki is. Yeah, these babies give me a taste of the finer foods Earth has to offer. I've had tons of umaibo, but the flavor of the sauce and the texture on this one can't be beat. I totally agree. That's why I always stock up whenever I find them. Well, I appreciate the generosity. Oh, and don't eat them in secret, all right? Be proud, Umaibo buddy. Okay, I'll do that. Tell you what, I'll even hand them out to everyone on the Aldus, too. You save some for me, though. You know, even though I'm still mad as hell about what happened with the Astoria, you took some seriously impressive action when you ganked that entire ship on your own. Stealing it was certainly a grave violation of military regulations. But at the same time, I was simply following my convictions. 
I don't regret doing it. I figured I could probably save the crew members of the Edis, or at least recover its flight recorder. It might have seemed impulsive, but I put a lot of thought into what I was doing. Oh yeah, I can tell you did. But even before that, you defied your superior and tried to stop him from attacking the Edis. That ain't something any run-of-the-mill military officer would do. Ah, that. That's not a violation of military regulations, actually. Wait, it's not? Correct. That was just a case of disobeying an order I deem to be unjust. That in itself does not violate regulations. My objective is... to fulfill my duties as a Federation officer, in accordance with the law and my beliefs. But, regrettably, it seems that I am not capable enough to accomplish that objective yet. Look what ended up happening because of me. Don't you get down on yourself, Marielle. Think about it. Those convictions of yours are what saved our lives in the end. I owe you a lot. <laughs> Thank you for saying so. That tells me that what I did needed to be done, despite my inexperience. What are you two staring at? Uh, well, Leticia asked me to come look at the cosmos. This view of the world of stars, it looks so very different from the starry skies to which I am accustomed. I could gaze upon it for hours. Try getting a job in space. You'll get sick of seeing them real quick. Take me, for example. I can't even remember the last time I stopped to smell the celestial roses. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat as Ray. Though the view does vary by location, so I wouldn't say I ever get tired of it. <sighs> I would like to see more of the starry skies. Ray, which do you like better? Seeing the stars from space like this? Or seeing them up in the sky from the ground? Hmm... I guess... The view of the stars from space. I agree. They're so close, I feel like I can touch them. Sometimes I even find myself reaching my hand out. I share the same feeling. Truly, every star shines so brilliantly, like so many jewels in the darkness. You know, I was thinking, you must get paid pretty well when you're a Federation lieutenant, huh? Are we talking money all of a sudden? Oh yeah. A transpo guy like myself would love to hear about it. I'm not so sure you would. To be perfectly honest with you, I've never paid much attention to my salary. I would kill to be able to say that. No, I mean, I don't have time to spend it. You can't shop when you're on long-term duty, you know. Ah, it's a military thing. Gotcha. But man, that's such a waste. You gotta spend it. Money's a commodity. Easier said than done. Okay then. Tell you what, Captain Ray here will teach you a thing or two about how to spend it. What about buying some designer clothes or cosmetics? I'm not really into that kind of stuff. Not even every once in a while? Come on, girl, treat yourself. M maybe. I'll give it some thought. You know what? Why don't you come shopping with me? What? Uh, no particular reason or anything. I just want to have someone looking out for me so I don't make any mistakes with my money, you know? I mean, you're the one who brought it up in the first place. All right. Yeah, you got me. I promised. He Kenny violated your precious pact, planting the seeds of the planet Expel joining the Federation. As a result, our studies of symbometrics expanded greatly. Yes, but... It was much the same when your ancestor, Captain Emerson, found gravitic engine technology. <sighs> History has proven that the law must be broken at times to move worlds forward. And at this moment, that role falls upon my shoulders. 
What authority does a Kenny have to try and stop me? I... I... I'm... Don't listen to this ass, Mariel. He's just trying to manipulate you. Oh, really? The reason for Mariel's ancestors breaking the rules was because following them would have led to the deaths of lots of innocent people. Don't lump them in with a dumbass trying to steal other people's stuff for his own selfish gain. A Vergoldian defending the crimes of the most esteemed family in the Federation. Now this is rich. Those crimes were defined by the Federation on its own terms. Your rules don't mean shit to those of us on the outside. Ray, I'm okay now. Thank you. What you say is true. My family's track record as soldiers of the Federation was perhaps never the most praiseworthy. And my distaste for my family's legacy is precisely why I swore to myself that I would uphold Federation law to the letter during my career. But I will not abide by words from you. Childish logic. Excusing your own actions because someone else did it? Have you no shame? A Kenny through and through. Lieutenant Mariel, I have looked at the Scorpium data you provided. I was surprised by your confrontation with the Virian soldiers who crash-landed on the planet. Aster 4 is an underdeveloped planet, is it not? Yes, sir. About that. You were doing what you thought was right, correct? Upholding what were once core values of the Federation, lost under Remington's lead. Yes, sir. But I believe that it should not excuse me from Federation law, though. I knowingly violated the UP-3. For that, and for the illegal seizure of the merchant vessel Akizuki, I should be brought to trial. Well, I can't argue with that. W wait Those of us in positions of power can never let the ends justify the means, regardless of the outcome. But still! That said, the Federation's in no shape to court-martial you right now. I'll take full responsibility for your deeds until a more appropriate time presents itself. You stay here with your friends. Uh. All things considered, Lieutenant Mariel, I think you made the best calls you could. Your actions don't tarnish your family name. Far from it. Making as much known should serve you well when the time comes to face the jury. Admiral. Don't you leave us now, you hear? The Federation is in bad enough shape as it is. We don't need to lose another talent like yourself. Sir! Okay, can you be straight with me on something? What's this now? Admiral Maverick gave his spiel and all, but what's the Fed really got planned for Aster for? Well, under regular circumstances, a planet such as Aster 4 would be flagged as a protector at the moment a figure of importance, like Leticia, makes contact with a high-ranking Federation officer. And with ours? Ray, what do you think would be best? Currently? <laughs> the Feds can't tell anyone else what to do. Right. Especially now, since Aster 4 has made official contact with Planet for Gold, too. Should the Federation try to muscle in and force anything here, it would only aggravate whatever fragile relation they have with for Gold now. So, for that reason and more, it's on hold. On hold? Yes, just floating in the air. Between us and Leticia, I think we can force the Federation to cool down its urges for a while. True enough. Oh my gosh, do you have any idea what you've done? Yes, I do. I already told you so. What's going on? Why are you guys fighting? Raymond! <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. It is not nothing. I don't know if it's from Parapium or Vergness, but Midas somehow managed to steal a machine and bring it here to Aster 4. Ah, that annoying pact. Too bad you've been caught by this one, Midas. Might as well give it up. <sighs> 
Fine, fine, I apologize. Midas, are you truly sorry for what you did? Oh, yes, I swear on my mother's life. In any case, I will confiscate it and take full responsibility for what happened. Don't do anything like this ever again, okay? Yes, yes, fine, fine. Now be gone. I've got my eye on you. Meow. 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 Huh? <laughs> I was just... Uh-huh. Did I not just hear the sound of a cat meowing somewhere nearby? Ah, you did. No cat, though. It was Maria. It, it was nothing. Right, Bray? Please say it was nothing. Uh, right. See? Nothing's going on here. Definitely not me mimicking a cat to try and get close enough to pet it. That's just nonsense. <sighs> oh, come on. I see. I have an approximate understanding of what you are doing. Oh. You like cats, don't you, Marielle? Yes, I do. My grandmother loved cats more than anything, so she had many at home. And I always wanted a little kitty of my own, but I'm constantly away from home, so... Yeah, zipping around space for a living doesn't make it easy to have a pet. That's why whenever I see one on my travels, I just can't help but try and pet them. Oh, such sweet, cute little babies. Understood. That being the case, have you considered pursuing the position of captain? What? What do you mean? Were you a captain, you would have absolute authority aboard your spacecraft to do as you wished. For instance, wouldn't that make it easy for you to keep the company of a cat in your living quarters? I could do that? A captain, huh? Hmm. So I can't own a cat without becoming a captain. I have to make it a reality. For the kitties! I doubt anyone in the Federation's extensive history has ever wanted to be a captain for that reason. The practice of having goals is always beneficial. Hey, um, there's something I want to apologize for. This is rather sudden. Yeah, well, uh, it's about when we first met. I kind of gave you a hard time for being from the Kenny family, and I'm sorry. Ah, uh, I remember that. I also recall you saying my family is the most notable in all the Federation, and that we're regular UP Free Breakers. Uh -huh. Don't worry, it didn't bother me. Everyone reminds me literally all the time that I'm a Kenny. So I'm totally used to it. Uh, honestly though, I feel really bad, but that's not all I've got to say. After all the battles, all the craziness that you and I've been through together, it's not the girl from the Kenny family we've relied on. It's just you, Marielle. We can count on you because of who you are, not your family. I'm... so happy to hear that. Probably more so than anything else I've ever been told up to this point. So I guess we'll have each other's backs for just a bit longer, huh? You got it. We're at the home stretch. Let's fight it out together. Hey, school in session? Why would you think that? Considering her position, I wanted Malkia's advice on how to be a better leader. Oh, okay. Makes sense. You being in charge of a crew and all. Ultimately, I believe the most important thing for a person in a position of power is to be calm. For no one wants to follow a leader whose mind is in disarray. Even when feeling unsure, simply projecting a serene ambiance will help those around you remain calm. In truth, it is not dissimilar to standing your ground. I get it in theory, but when the time comes, I can't help but feel flustered. Hmm. Then you should try deep breathing exercises. 
deep breathing exercises? <sighs> I'm finished. What is this supposed to do? If you've lost your composure, the first step to regain it is to breathe deeply. Before making a big decision or taking drastic measures, remember to take a deep breath. That alone will make you feel much better. Deep breaths, huh? Maybe I should try doing it too. You should, Ray. You're our leader after all. Let's try it out together. I mean, I've heard about it before, but it's never been something I've tried on my own. It is, isn't it? Thank you so much, Malkia. I'll keep this in mind for next time. Good. Very wise of you. Are you all right? Pull yourself together! Mario! Getting saved by others is so not your style. Come on, there's a platform over there where we can take it easy. A platform? What's going on? We didn't just get hurled into space or something, did we? Duma called this quasi-integration. I think we're creating these places using our shared knowledge of them. Because we're quasi-integrated with the Scorpium network. Our shared knowledge, huh? You know, though it wasn't for very long, I'm really proud that I got to helm the operations alongside you. Back on the bridge of the Aldis. Even though I was on the Astoria when it took down the Edis, you all accepted me. And needed me. Not as Lieutenant Kenny, but just as Marielle. You let me be a part of your... family. I felt so appreciated. It's only natural to count on capable allies. And you're the only person who's ever said that about me. Though I am... naturally gifted. That reputation is hung over my head. It's made me utterly useless. The Federation ain't dumb enough to promote someone utterly useless to Lieutenant. Not to mention, your grandpa would have never let you get away with being like that. Yes, you're right. But I have to wonder, why didn't anyone in the Federation ever challenge me? Or my family name? You were the only one who did. Well, I tried to see you for who you are. Maybe those others didn't. I guess that's the big difference. Ray. I mean, I had plenty of reservations about you at first. But I soon recognized what an incredibly awkward, honest, and good person you were. Back on the Akizuki, I realized that you're someone who knows what you've got to learn. And more importantly, what needs to get done. And that, that's my kind of person. Uh, wh what are you saying? I'm saying that's why we're here. We're standing right here, where we can see each other eye to eye. Right, of course. You startled me. Having said all that, we can't stay here forever. Let's get a move on, so we can both get back to where we actually feel safe. Yes, let's do that. Even if that means our paths have to diverge at some point. I'm sure you and I'll be together somewhere, laughing up a storm. Right then. Hmm. I do believe the planetary representatives must be in a consensus by now. Good sir. Surely you see the merits in joining the Pangalactic Federation. We would hate to return today empty-handed, if you would just sign the dotted line. Lieutenant Kenny, I hear the Federation has found itself in quite the predicament of late. It's Lieutenant Colonel. This information came from... Lieutenant Colonel? The very future of the Federation seems to be at risk, yet not a word of it was mentioned here. You understand our lack of confidence? Hmm, you may be right. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, surely none of this is related to the matter at hand. Sorry, buddy. 
You forgot to ask our opinion on that. What? What is the meaning of this? Allow me to introduce you to Raymond Lawrence of the planet Virgold. He's currently assisting our government in an advisory role on matters concerning these negotiations. Well, uh, and you didn't think to consult with us? And what might that have done for us? <clears throat> I gotta be honest with you. We've just about had it up to here with all these secrets you've been keeping. So why don't we start this process over again with all the actual facts laid out? What do you say, Lieutenant Kenny? Yes, I would agree. <sighs> You really saved me back there. You sure you ought to be thanking me? I mean, I just came in and busted up plans you had to add a new planet to the Federation. You did, and that's exactly what we needed. We really need to stomp out the corrupt practices Remington and his supporters put in effect. Backroom dealings, influence bought through bribes, the Federation's hands are still far from clean. Typical problematic feds. Man, I'm really starting to wish other planets would step up and start seeing through their tricks, too. Not sure there's much we can do about that. The scales of power are too heavily tipped. But if we gotta keep playing middleman, we might just end up with another planetary alliance led by Vergald instead. It ain't easy keeping organizations this big together. If the Federation falls, well, that's just another page in history. Okay then, Federation Envoy is off this way. Right then. I don't know if you heard, Ray, but I got promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. Ah, oh, moving on up in the world, huh? I could find myself an Admiral one day. So you know, if things do work out that way, if things work out, what way? The whole Virgold-led planetary alliance bit. Oh, that. If I climb the ranks on this end, and you on yours... Who knows? Maybe our paths might cross again. I could think of worse. R really But don't hold your breath. I'm in this for the long haul. Oh, sounds like we could have a deal then. And that's a promise. Promise. <laughs>